So here's the deal. I mean, I'm ready to preach if y'all ready to listen. Y'all, y'all ready? I'm not, hope, I don't think I'll be, I may, I don't know. I, I'm going to quit saying that, right? So here's what I want to do. I want to feed off two weeks ago. Because last Sunday, I didn't even get to preach. Y'all, y'all said amen. That's all right. That's <laughs> all right. But here's the deal. Y'all ready? Some of you missed your blessing. Because here's why. Here's why. I didn't even get to preach. Two people, a husband and a wife, raised their hands to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're not going to hell. Don't miss what God is doing in this house. Don't miss it. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. It's all about his kingdom. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, husband and wife, together as one, raise their hands. That right there, y'all watch me, that's priceless. See, some of you have forgot where God's brought you from. I don't want to ever forget that God rescued me out of the pits of hell. I don't want to ever forget that. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to piggyback off a sermon I started two, two Sundays ago. And the title of it was called Messy Miracle. Messy Miracle. So everybody say Messy Miracle. Yeah, y'all hang with me because listen, you've got to lean in and listen to this one. So if you have your Bible, really quick, Acts chapter 2, I got to go to Acts. I got to go when Jesus Christ birthed the church. And watch this. The church was not birthed from man. It was birthed from the man. Don't ever forget. If a church is ever governed by a pastor or leadership, leave. Get out of there. Because that's a man-ran church. We want a spirit-filled, Holy Ghost, water-walking church. And it's, that's what we need. Amen? Everybody say, messy miracle. Are y'all ready? Everybody ready? Yeah. Let's do this then. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. I know y'all have read this a thousand times, but this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I'm reading now the New King James. The Bible says, listen to this. Pay attention to the words. Pay attention. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Fully come. Don't miss this. Fully come. It's important. They were all in one accord in one place. Can y'all imagine what would happen today? If we cut, start coming together in one place, touching and agreeing, same mindset, upper room, when your head changes, your mind changes, watch. And suddenly, I pray for it, and suddenly today, there come a sound from heaven, hallelujah, the sound of a, a mighty, mighty Russian wind. And it filled the whole house, not part of the house, not half of the upper room, it filled the whole upper house, the whole upper room. And matter of fact, the day of Pentecost started in the upper room in a bedroom of a house. It didn't start in the church. It did not start in the church. Pentecost started upstairs in a bedroom of an individual's house. My question before I even go any farther, are you experiencing Pentecost at your house? How's your upper room this morning? Oh, hallelujah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Watch this. A mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, sitting. Then there appeared in them divided tongues. Now watch, here's a controversial issue, but God's going to give us wisdom on this today. Listen, divided tongues, as of fire, as of fire. John the Baptist says, I baptize those with water, but the one that precedes me baptizes them with water and fire. Water and fire. Water is an outward expression of what happened to you inwardly. But you will never start living for God until you get a fire in your life. Listen to me. Here it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. King James says, Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues. Whether you believe me or not, this is what the Bible says. They began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit, everybody say, as the Spirit, gave them utterance. Listen, last Sunday was Sunday, May 31st. And according to the Jewish calendar, the Jewish calendar, that was Pentecost Sunday. No wonder two souls got saved. No, no wonder. A little over 2,000 years ago, let me teach a little bit, the church was birthed. 2,000 years ago, rewind the tape. 2,000 years ago, the church was birthed. She was born. But here's important. Listen, we missed this. But before God released her, 
Before God released the church, he gave her instructions. Now listen to me very carefully. We are Americans and we do not like instructions. We do not like instructions. You say, Brian, how you know? I've had more stinking calls over the guidelines. Notice the Bible says, are y'all right? All right. Notice the Bible says in Acts 2.1, Acts 2.1, the very first, fully come. Everybody say fully come. That, listen to me, Elkhorn. That's what I'm praying for, Elkhorn. That she will fully become what God has created her to be. We can come and sing two songs, three songs, give an invitation, but I'm telling you, what's going to change is when we fully become what God has created us to be. Watch this. Now, there are some people, there are some people that try to say that this is not for us today. They sure do. But watch this. I, God spoke this into me. He said, Brian, can you find anywhere in the Bible where the Holy Ghost came, but he left? Uh, I never seen where the Holy Ghost just came and he left. No, no, no. Listen, when he fully came, he fully stayed. When he fully came, he fully stayed. When he fully came, he fully stayed. See, watch this. I, I wrote this down in my notes. God is for us. Jesus is with us, but the Holy Spirit is in us. Yeah, God is for us. Jesus is with us, but the Holy Spirit is in us. You know what that means? For within, for within, for within, that he is in us. Watch this. I'm telling you, if we ever get this truth, Elkhorn and all these local churches will become unstoppable. Become unstoppable. Now, I felt in my spirit to say this, not only time to come back to church, but it's time for the church to have a comeback. It's not only time to come back to church, but it is time in the name of Jesus Christ for Elkhorn and all these churches who are plowing the ground and plundering hell and populating heaven, not just come back to church, but it is time for the church to have a comeback. How many of y'all think we serve a comeback God? A comeback God. And I proclaim that over our children. I proclaim that over our youth. I, I, claim, I proclaim a comeback marriage. I proclaim today this over our community, over our church, over myself. Listen, I'm not arrived. Now I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting closer to Jesus, but watch this. I'm not arrived. So watch this. Elkhorn, just because we come back to church, it does not mean it's time to relax. No, no, no. It does not mean it's time to get comfortable. No, 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 no. Take it easier, sit back. No, it's time for a comeback. It is time for a comeback. And here's what God spoke into my heart. All God is looking for is an empty, surrendered vessel. All God is looking for is an empty, did y'all hear me? Not somebody full of their self. God is looking for an empty, surrendered vessel, an empty, surrendered person, an empty, surrendered marriage. You show me an empty marriage and I'll show you a Holy Ghost Spirit filled marriage. An empty surrender youth group. Could y'all imagine if everybody in here today emptied yourself out in worship? What would you look like right now if you truly emptied yourself out? So here's what this word is in my spirit. Two Sundays ago, I preached a sermon called Messy Miracles. I know y'all remember that. We talked about a man being born blind. Y'all remember that, right? If you're not, you probably read it in John chapter 9. His disciples, the followers, the elite... The men who should have known better, they started questioning Jesus. Why is this man born blind? Why does he have sin in his life? And they even had a comment and said, does his parents have sin in their life? Why is this man born blind? And while they were asking why, 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 it sounded like a Christian, why, 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 why this God? Why is this happening to me, God? Why this? Lord, they're getting a why, why, why. God says, watch this. While they're asking why, God's saying, watch this. Now, I love this. He, all of a sudden, he looks on the ground and he sees dirt. And I'm not going to do what I did two weeks ago. <laughs> I, but I had a teenager come to me and said, I'll never forget that sermon. 
I'll never forget that sermon. Sometimes like, we just read the Bible like it's a little book on the, on the shelf. You got to take it off and dust it and say, God, show me what that blind man went through. Show me, God, what it means to have mud in my eyes. Show me, God, what it means to follow your leadership. Show me. See, we read the Bible like it was good for Peter, James, and John. No, it's good for Bobby, Brian, and Mitchell. It's good for all of us. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So listen to me. Jesus said, now go to the Jordan. I want you to get in the Jordan. I want you to wash your face. I want you to wash your eyes. That's where y'all's parents got to wash your face. It's right here. Now I want y'all to listen to me. How did the blind man, I started thinking about this. How did the blind man, blind man, blind man, with mud in his eyes, find the water? Now listen to me. Study your Bibles. Jesus didn't go with him. Mm -mm. Uh Uh-uh. He said, you go. I feel the Holy Ghost. You go. You go. You go. I spit on the ground. I made a mud pie. put the mud in your eyes. And Jesus said these words. Now you go to the Jordan. You go to the Jordan. I love this. What if I told you the same way? Y'all got to hang with me. The blind man with mud in his eyes found the water. Water which represents the Holy Spirit in the Bible. It's the same way Jesus birthed the church on the day of Pentecost full of the Holy Spirit. There's a similarity here. See, most people, listen to me, most people pay more attention to the mud than they do the miracle. Most people pay more attention to the mud that has been thrown in your eye than you do the process of the miracle. I'm going somewhere today. Everybody wants the miracle. Everybody, how many of y'all want, everybody, anybody, everybody want a miracle here today, right? <laughs> Listen to me very carefully. There's a process to receiving the miracle, and it involves mud. <laughs> I know y'all don't like this, but it involves mud. It, it involves some muddy moments, some hard moments. Listen to me, I'm telling you, how do you serve God with mud in your eyes? How do you work and go ye therefore with mud in your eyes? How does the church change the world with mud in our eyes? How can you have a hot, steaming, rocking marriage with mud in your eyes? Y'all missed the praise right there. All the husbands just said, preach that preacher. Yeah, preach that. How do you parent a rebellious child with mud in your eyes? How do we do, how do we have church with mud in our eyes. So here we go. A lot of you are not going to like what I'm getting ready to tell you, but this is what God spoke into my heart, and I'm going to give it to you. Jesus taught the blind man how to walk with mud in his eyes. That's powerful. He said, you go. You go. Now listen to me very carefully. He says, Jesus taught the blind man how to walk with mud in his eyes, step by step by step by step by step, I feel like I'm going to fall by step, by step, by step. Listen, if you want a good marriage in your life, you got to take one day at a time and keep stepping it off. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, here, y'all want to hear something crazy? This is crazy. This is crazy. From Jerusalem to the Jordan is three miles. Oh, that's that good. I'm going to preach this. Three miles. Jesus Christ told a blind man with mud in his eyes, now you go from Jerusalem to the Jordan. Three miles, Pastor Drew, three miles. See, that's nothing to us. Some of y'all can just take a hop, skip, and a jump and be done in three miles. You can run it, you know what I'm saying? B-Ref got his tongue hanging out. (laughs) But how would you like to be a blind man? Come on, y'all. See, you got to put yourself in his shoes. Oh, aren't you going to go with me? He said, I'm always with you. I'm always with you. I put the Holy Ghost in you. But there's something special, Sarah, when he says, I I want you to go. Dave Newton, he wants you to walk the three-mile trip. He wants me to walk from Jerusalem to the Jordan. How does a man with, with a blind man with mud in his eyes get three miles down the road to a water hole? I thought about this too. Can y'all imagine what the people were thinking who seen him and what they were saying? See, we just read a story in the Bible like, well, bless his heart. No, no, no. You know what God spoke to me? Back there while we was praying, he said, you tell the church, you tell Elkhorn, if they want to have church, they got to start worshiping like a blind man. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. See, God says, listen, you've got to keep stepping it off, stepping it off, stepping off. You want the miracle? Yes, I want the miracle. Keep stepping. Keep going. Don't stop. Even if they be against you, God is for you. Jesus is with you. And the Holy Ghost is in you. Somebody give him praise. I'm trying to preach to y'all today. It's a three-mile journey. It ain't going to be easy. Who lied to the church? Well, Brian, we're all supposed to love. Yeah, we are. But sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's tough. So how did a blind man with mud in his eyes walk three miles? He had to go through the city. He was out in the field. How did he find the water? Come on, y'all. How did he find the water? And I love this. God said, blind man, he said these words, go to the Jordan. How did in the upper room, how in the upper room, Old Testament, the Holy Spirit used to come and go, come and go, come and go. Now God says, I'm, Jesus said, I'm going to God to sit at the right hand of the Father, but I'm putting one inside of you that will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter where you go, He is with you. No matter how you feel, He is with you. No matter if you're down or you're up, in or out, He is with us. I want us to get this, Elkhorn. He's with us. He's in us. He's all around us. He's for us. We can't lose. But how did the blind man with mud in his eyes, who Jesus did not go with him, he said, I done told you, I'm with you. So how did this happen? How did this happen? Listen to me. There is a process to your miracle. There is a process to the miracle. There's a process to the marriage. There's a process to life. There's a process to everything we do in life. But I'm telling you, when y'all listen, everybody with me, say, I'm with you. What if today, right now, you had to go the rest of the service with your eyes closed? That's what that blind man for all his life. He woke up and he seen darkness. And now Jesus spits on the ground, makes a mud pie, puts the mud on his eyes, and he says, if you want your miracle, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you want this miracle, you go get it. You go get it. But God, it's three miles. I'm with you. But he wasn't side by side. Watch. So there's a process to your miracle. Y'all ready to get this? Number one, you got to trust the voice of the Lord. You got to trust the voice of the Lord. You got to trust the voice of the Lord. You got to trust the voice of the Lord. You got to trust the voice of the Lord. Listen to me. As loud as I am, and I'm from Kentucky, Jesus is louder. Sometimes he speaks, he speaks like a moth, and sometimes he roars like a lion. Sometimes he's as gentle as a sheep. But sometimes he'll scold you like a lion. Yes. So I'm telling you today, and listen, I'm stepping out today because I know there's people in here today that does not believe that God speaks anymore. He speaks. I want you to listen to me. Could it be the reason why the children of Israel stayed in the wilderness is because they was not paying attention to the voice of God. Trust the voice of the Lord. See, God is speaking right now. Can you hear him? Or are you so preoccupied with the way church didn't go for you today? You're worried about something else, but you're, you're missing the voice of God. You're missing the voice of God. Number two, you got to follow his instructions. He's got a voice. And watch, before he birthed the church, he gave her instructions. Watch, trust the voice of the Lord, follow his instructions. And number three, Keep taking step by step until you reach the water. Y'all got me? Somebody say amen. amen. Keep taking step by step, step by step until you reach the water. Pastor Drew, I want you to come up here real quick. We're going to make this a reality today. So I started thinking about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not, I didn't want to do this, so I got Drew to do it. <laughs> God says, if we're going to get somewhere in our miracle... We got to start living like a blind man. We got to get as anxious. We've got to say, God, I'm hungry for you. I'm not going to stop, God. I'm listening for your voice. I'll follow your instructions. And no matter how I feel or how I wake up, I'm going to keep stepping it off no matter what. I'm not going to stop in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Thank you, God. 
Listen for his voice, follow his instructions, and keep stepping. Listen for his voice. Y'all got me? Everybody say, listen for his voice. Yeah, come on now. Follow his instructions. Y'all know the Bible's basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving. That is our instruction manual. Here's what God just spoke to me. He said, you tell them, if they want the Bible blessings, they got to do it the Bible way. Y'all welcome for him. Here, take your glasses off. I want to do it. Now listen, this is some serious stuff. I measured the, the height of the stage. It's three and a half feet. It's three and a half feet. Three and a half feet. Take one more step. You realize look, there's nothing there but a floor. So if you do not follow my instructions, if you do not hear my voice, if you do not step it the right way, you're going to end up in the danger zone. Right? So here it is. Um, how old are you? 32. Oh, you still did. <laughs> if he was 40, I would have stopped. You know what I'm saying? I would have stopped. Okay, so here's the deal. We're going to have some fun right here right now. He said, I want you to go find the Jordan three miles from Jerusalem, and you got number one, listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Number two, you got to follow my instructions. And number three, you can't stop. You can't stop. You can't stop in your marriage. You can't stop with your children. You can't stop at church. You can't stop at work. You can't stop at school. You can't stop. You've got to listen to my voice. You've got to follow my instruction. And you've got to keep walking. You cannot stop. So, Drew, listen to me. This is serious stuff. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm saying here, there is a pan of water at the bottom. <laughs> at this altar at the bottom of where the, where the kneeling altars are at, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so I know you don't have mud, but you have a handkerchief. Yes, sir. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to trust my voice. I want you to follow my instructions. And I want you, no matter what, no matter what, keep going. Yes, sir. Don't stop. Yes, sir. Don't stop. Don't stop. So you ready? Yes, sir. All right, man, take off walking. Go ahead, just straight. Straight, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, stop. stop, stop. No, I'll take one more step forward. Right there, right there. All right, yeah, all right. So there's a roadblock. Some of you feel like you're at a roadblock. Some of you feel I can't get around it. There's something in front of me that is stopping me from getting to my miracle. So Drew... Thus saith the Lord, I want you to take two steps to the left. One more. All right, turn back to your right. Go. See, y'all, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, that's how God works. You're doing good. All right, stop. Don't go no farther. See, I think God's like that. Don't move, Drew. Listen, I think God is like that. We, here's what we do as Christians. We get as far as we can get. But I've not failed. I've not fallen. I'm not hurt. I'm still standing. But your feet is on the edge. And you take one more step the wrong way, and you're going off the deep end. I'm, pr I'm trying to preach good today. Some of you... Listen to me, I, I just felt this from the Lord. Some of you may like, some of you feel like you have not heard from God lately. This is, this is, thank you, God. What if I told you the reason why you may, may have not heard from God is because he trusts the direction he's got you going. Mm. Y'all missed it? He trusts, you go. You, no, no, dude, don't, don't you go, you stay. Could y'all imagine 7.2 billion people in the earth and trying to answer prayers all at one time? I'm glad he's God. Amen. I'm glad he's God. Now, Drew, uh, take about four steps to your right. To your right. One, two, three. All right, right, that's good. Turn to your left again. Go, now turn left. All right, go walk, walk straight. There's a rail right in front of you. Hold on to the rail. 
When you feel like you're going to fall, hold on to something. I'm preaching. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Because some of you feel like you're getting ready to fall, but when you're down, he's still up. You can hold on to the presence of God. Drew, you've got six steps. You've got six steps. You need to go in Jesus Christ's name. Six steps. Count them off. Stop, 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 stop. Because see, sometimes you're doing so good, you feel like you got it now. But God, <laughs> God is speaking. Y'all got to trust this stuff. But God will stop you when you think you're stepping good. When things are seem to be going good in your life, God will throw a U-turn in your life. God will say, no, 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 no. You feel too comfortable where you're at, Elkhorn. And I'm going to say, stop. That's, listen to me. That's exactly how the blind man had to live. See, you take your sight for, for granted. I have. But what if I had to preach like this? Where am I at? I'd have to trust a voice in my life to get me to my destination. Y'all got me? Drew, go ahead and take three more steps. All right. Drew, you know where you're at? You think so? Okay, good. Just keep walking then. Go straight. You going to trust me now? Or do you feel like you got it all under control yourself? All right, turn around. Come back to my voice. Go right just a little bit. Two steps. Come forward. All right, come on. Come on. Walk, 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 walk. Stop. To go right. Walk, 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 walk. You can, I trust you. So you may not hear from me right now because keep walking. Don't stop. Because I trust where you're going. All right, stop. Turn left. Now listen to me very carefully. You've got 10 steps to your miracle. You've got 10 steps to... See, we read this story about this blind man. Oh, I feel so sorry. That's how God wants us to live. God wants His church to live like they're blind. God wants His people to live like... Lord, unless I hear Your voice, follow Your instructions, I'm going to make a mess of my life. I need You, Jesus. I want You, Jesus. Y'all got me today? Somebody say, thank you, God. Because some of you are trusting your own ways, your own thinking, your own theology, your own... Drew 10 steps away from your miracle. Step it off. That's big steps. That's okay, though. No, come on, come on, come on. To your left, just a little. Left a little. I want you to kneel down. So powerful. To your, to your right, my son, because you have been faithful, because, because you have listened to the right voice, because you follow my instructions, I want you now, Gideon, to take your hands right out in front of you and come on up, up a little bit more to the, to the right, just a little bit more and go down. Touch the water, 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 touch the water. Take your miracle. Rejoice in your miracle. Give God praise in your miracle. I know it didn't look good. I know you struggled along the way. I know you listened to the wrong voice. I know you didn't follow my instructions sometimes. But welcome to the water. Welcome to the presence of God. Welcome. Come on, somebody. That's you. That's your life. You got to worship him like you're blind this morning. Somebody give God praise in this house. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on. We're going to praise him till the glory falls. Come on, praise him. Get up here. We're going to praise him until the glory falls. We're going to praise him until we touch the water. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Don't stop. Come on. Hallelujah. Now watch this. 
The Bible says, the Bible says in John chapter 9, that once he touched the water and washed his eyes, he could see. I started thinking about this. What was the first thing he done? He gave God praise. See, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. God has rescued y'all from hell. And you're sitting and telling me you're, you just don't praise like some people praise? You let somebody from hell escape hell and show up at church. And then you'll find out that they've touched the water. Amen. That they want one drop of water on their tongue. Amen. He said these words that then he could see. Take off, take off that, take off that. Isn't that great? It's incredible, isn't it? Drew Hayes, as a, as a man of God, as a husband, as a father, my commission to you today is to live like a blind man. Live. Elkhorn. I, my commission to you and myself. Matter of fact, we're going to do this. Just stand up. Everybody stand up all over this house. Y'all put some music in the atmosphere. I love y'all. The Word of God is powerful. So powerful. It's so powerful. Here's what God spoke to me. Jesus could have took that blind man by the hand. He sure could have. He, he could have took that blind man by the hand and walked with him, but God says, you walk. And as you're walking, keep listening. Some of you got, I'm feeling this in my spirit, you got a big decision to make. Listen to me. Don't make it fleshly. Give God your ears. All seven churches of Asia Minor, those who have an ear, let them hear. Let them hear. Not let them guess. Let them hear what the Lord is saying, thus saith the Lord. As you, follow, as you hear my voice and follow my instruction, keep stepping it. That's so God. How many of y'all know that's so God? Here's what I wrote. We say, God, I can't find you. I hear this all the time. God, where are you? God, I can't find you. And God spoke this in my heart. I'm right here. Listen, this is so good. I'm just waiting for you to follow my last instructions I gave you. Y'all didn't hear that? God, where are you? I can't hear you. I don't feel you like I once did. Could it be? Could it be? Could, could, could it be? Because you've not followed his last instructions. See, a lot of y'all want to go to high school and graduate, but you got to go to elementary and middle school first. All I'm asking us to do, what does God want Elkhorn to look like? Y'all ready? The way he created her. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Prophecy's still real. Tongues is still real. I care what anybody says. I know what the Bible says. And here's what I, I'm going I'm I'm to land a plane. Trust God. Trust God even when you can't trace Him. Y'all got me? Trust God. Everybody say, trust God. Come on, everybody say, trust God. Even when you can't trace Him. Trust when you can't trace. <laughs> Trust when you can't trace. Trust when you can't trace. So here's what I'm going to lay at your feet. The church would have never been birthed. Y'all listen to me. Born. Unless they listen to the Lord's voice. Y'all got me? If they had not listened to the Lord's voice and you go up to the upper room. You stay there. You follow my instructions until you feel the power of the Holy Spirit touch your life. And then listen, here's so good. Once you hear my voice, follow my instructions, what they do? They start stepping it off. The first church service at the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people got saved. And I declare in the unction of God working through the Holy Spirit, we shall, we will see that again. Greater things will happen in the end than it did even in Jesus' days. I received that. Some of your marriages, watch me. 
Some of your marriages are in trouble. Could it be, could it be, could it be, could it be? You've not had a blind moment in your marriage. Your marriage has become all about you. Could it be the reason why some of your marriages are like upside down right now? It's because you, you, you're not trusting the voice of God. You're not following His instructions. And you're not stepping off. Some of you are about ready to quit. And if this was ever a divine word from God, it's today. Trust the voice of God. Everybody say that. Trust the voice of God. Y'all ready? Follow His instructions. Come on. Follow His instructions and keep walking. Come on. Keep stepping it off. Keep. I, everybody say this. I am not going to stop. Come on. I am not going to stop. Come on. I'm not a quitter. Come on. I'm going to keep stepping it off. But we got half of you in the game. And that's about the church. That's about church. So you ready? Trust the voice of God. Follow His instructions and keep stepping. Do not stop. Do not stop. If I had listened to man, I would not be your pastor today. Heck no. Heck no. Nope. But I'm listening to His voice. And I refuse to listen to man's voice. I'm going to follow His instructions in my marriage, with my children, at church, wherever I'm at. God, what do you say about this? Well, that's a, that's a dangerous question to Bobby. Lord, what, what, what about this, God? Did they really mean what they said about that? God, did my wife really mean that? So in Jesus' name, I know we got six feet apart. But y'all ready? This altar's open. You may make an altar your seat. I don't know. But here's what I do know. God is in this house. And God has been speaking to some of you and speaking to some of you and speaking to some of you. But the bottom line, you know He's speaking, but you're not following His instruction. If you want the Bible blessings, if you want the Bible marriage, if you want what God wants to give you, you've got to follow His instructions. So in Jesus' name, Father God, I've done what you told me to do. I have preached what you told me to preach. God, I'm going to trust you even when I can't trace you. So Lord, today, bless your precious people. Bless them. God, save, deliver, and set free in this house. I love you. I praise you, God. You're, you're the only thing worth praising. You're the only one that can rescue me out of the pits of hell. You're the only one, dear God, that can keep me married. You're the only one that can do it, God. So today, Lord, I'm listening. Come on, church. Let's listen to the voice of God. Let's follow His instructions. And let's never stop. Y'all got me? Never stop. In Jesus' name, this altar's open. In Jesus' name, you come.